much for joining us as we take you around San Diego. I'm CBS 8's Jenny Day. I'll get you caught up on a week's worth of news and look ahead in just 30 minutes. So with the new year now only days away, renters here in California are about to get a lot more legal protection. Beginning in 2024, tenants as well as people trying to rent an apartment will benefit from several new laws that will be going into effect. One of the most significant centers around how much Californians will have to come up with for their security deposit, which can often total several, th several thousand dollars. But as CBS 8's Richard Allen finds, many landlords are not on board with the new rules. And California and San Diego in particular have some of the highest rents in the entire nation. And that, of course, translates to excessively high security deposits that would be tenants have to come up with to secure an apartment. But this new law will cap that security deposit at one month's rent. I think it's an excellent idea. I think it should be done. People living in San Diego need help. Linda Vista resident Phyllis Sullivan is passionately in support of Assembly Bill 12, which beginning in July of 2024 will prohibit landlords from charging more than a month's rent as deposit. With the average rent for a one bedroom in San Diego now at $2,400, according to Zillow, that deposit can now range from $4,800 to $7,200 or even more, often depending on your credit score. Yeah, nobody has that big hunk of cash to lay down to get into an apartment, you know, usually. Any act to, to help people uh, trying to get a new home or new place, uh, I'm all for it. Anthony Hardage is currently a renter, but would like to buy a home soon. People can't afford, you know, the current situation that they're going through. It's really hard, the economics and everything. And, you know, I feel for a lot of people out there. I'm one of them trying to find a new home and it's just tough. It's tough out there. Many property owners, though, are opposed to this new law, warning that capping how much landlords can charge up front could lead to more rental housing being pulled from the market. With the California Apartment Association saying, quote, further limiting a property owner's ability to financially cover property damage or unpaid rent is an unfair imposition for rental housing providers. This isn't the only new law coming on board to help renters. Starting in 2024, landlords won't be able to evict tenants based on calls to law enforcement or suspected criminal activity. And in April, property owners will have a harder time evicting tenants if the landlord or their family members want to move in. San Diegans like Phyllis Sullivan say the more support for renters, the better. We all need to help. We need to help. And for more information on these new laws impacting renters, as well as a number of other new laws coming on board in the new year, just go to CBS8.com. Richard Allen there reporting. Thank you. And on January 1st, California's minimum wage will go up from $15.50 an hour to $16. In San Diego, it will be $16.85 an hour. And in April, fast food workers will see another increase and make a minimum of 20 bucks an hour. It's a change that's beneficial for workers, but economists say it will also impact the employer. I, I'm a little bit worried about the, uh, you know, the smaller um, businesses. Uh, even though th there's a carve out, uh, uh, you know, that the law doesn't directly apply to them. Yeah, so it will only apply to companies with more than 60 locations. Another new law will give up to five days of leave for reproductive loss. This includes miscarriage, failed adoption or failed surrogacy. And millions of low wage earners are getting a raise in the new year, but not all employers, once again, are taking higher minimum wages in stride. Pizza Hut says it's laying off more than 1,200 delivery drivers across California ahead of the state's minimum wage increase. Minimum wage again will jump to $20 in April. Other fast food chains, including McDonald's, have already said menu prices would rise in the state to counter the higher labor costs. Well, we do have an update now on the two bodies found in a vehicle at the Golden Acorn Casino parking lot on Tuesday. Investigators are confirming it was the missing couple from San Ysidro. Johnny Soto and his estranged wife, Melissa Soto, were reported missing since December 20th. San Diego police say the couple had been living separately and met up last week to talk. Officials revealed Melissa's cause of death was the result of strangulation and Johnny's appears to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Police say they are investigating this as a murder-suicide. 
It appears to be a, a, just a tragic case of domestic violence uh, involving a husband and wife that were separated, um, have a family, and we're just essentially doing what we can do to kind of close the gaps and fill in exactly what occurred with this particular couple. Anyone with additional information about the couple or what happened is asked to contact the San Diego Police Homicide Unit or Crime Stoppers. And San Diego County Sheriff's detectives say a man has been arrested in the stabbing death of a woman in San Marcos. Deputies say the unidentified woman was found in a shopping plaza on North Twin Oaks Valley Road just before 1030 Tuesday night. Deputies were responding to a domestic violence call when they found the woman. A man was later arrested, but we still don't know his name or what his relationship is to the victim. And the man convicted of killing a toddler while driving drunk was sentenced to 19 years to life in prison. Prosecutors say Margarito Vargas hit the one year old last year while she and her siblings were crossing Redwood Street in City Heights. The child died at the hospital. Investigators say Vargas's blood alcohol level was at least two times the legal limit. Vargas had a previous DUI record back in 2016, allowing prosecutors to now charge him with murder. Well, the state of Maine is barring former President Donald Trump from being on its 2024 presidential ballot, becoming the second state to do so. Colorado was the first. The state's Democratic Secretary of State, Sheena Bellows, made that decision under the insurrection clause of the 14th Amendment in relation to Trump's actions on January 6, 2021. The clause bans those who engaged in insurrection from holding office. The U.S. Supreme Court will likely rule on whether the provision applies to Trump and if he can run for president again. Well, U.S. officials say they are working with Mexico to limit the number of people trying to cross the border. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Homeland Security Advisor Alejandro Mayorkas met with Mexico's president. The meetings come after more than half a million migrants crossed the dangerous Darien Gap jungle connecting South America to Central America this year, double the number from last year. Meanwhile, the U.S. Border Patrol says that this month alone, officers on the southern border apprehended as many as 10,000 people each and every day. Border cities are bearing the brunt of the crisis and Texas Governor Greg Abbott has been busing thousands of migrants to Democrat led cities. The federal government must take responsibility and lead on this humanitarian crisis. Yeah, New York City's mayor is now requiring bus companies give a 32 hour notice before coming to the city and is imposing limits on where and when migrants can be dropped off. Well, good news for families that visit a Mission Bay Park. The basketball courts and playground at De Anza Cove are set to be replaced. This comes after complaints from the community about unsafe conditions. CBS 8's Rocio De La Fe is working for you and has more on the city of San Diego's plan to revamp this area. On any given day, you can find dozens of families here at Mission Bay Park, but many tell me they're disappointed with the lack of maintenance from the city, which they say makes playing basketball here almost impossible. And uh, it would be really nice if it was in better condition. People who frequent Mission Bay Park say they enjoy coming here for the stunning views. It is a very, very beautiful park. I come here all the time with my daughters. Families want to come down here, have fun, play basketball. We love this park and it's close to a lot of people. But those who like to play basketball say the conditions of the courts make it difficult to enjoy the park. It's a beautiful location and really, really scenic. It looks like it just needs a little bit of love. There's big cracks on both these courts. You can trip. We only have one working rim. Well, two working rims, one net that actually works. Yeah, these aren't quite ideal. Um, I've played a lot of basketball in my life. This court, I would not play one on one. Needs a new net and the surfacing needs to be redone and there's room for two more, which would be lovely. Yeah, we're missing a whole backboard, two of them actually, um, a net, and yeah, like you said, the pavement, the pavement needs some help. Out of the four half courts, only two have backboards and nets, but only one of the two nets is intact. The other is broken. You know, I can't always tell if it goes to the hoop if it doesn't have a net. 
I reached out to the city of San Diego about the community's concerns. They tell me these courts are slated for full replacement. The city adds that the project is in final design stages and should go to bid early next year. Information on the city's website also states the project will include a new and improved playground. Families I spoke to tell me the improvements can't come soon enough. It would be great if they did that for us. Garcia de la Fe, CBS 8. I love shooting hoops. I'm glad they're going to have some, some better stuff to play with. All right, well, we are now hearing from the owner of a famous Tijuana taco restaurant that just opened a new location in Chula Vista. Las Amaderas by El Poblano is on Broadway and Moss Street. The name is a nod to the smoke from the grills cooking meat. Pedro Rodriguez says his uncle founded their first taco spot years ago in Tijuana's famed Taco Alley. The process to bring it to San Diego took about two years. Why not rescue the name, rescue the where my family started? Yeah, the restaurant prides itself on its asada and adobado tacos. Well, the popular Lake Poway Recreation Area is also now upgraded. This week, the city opened its new adventure theme playground. Some of the playground's elements represent trees and rocks from Mount Woodson. The deputy mayor of Poway tells us she hopes this becomes the new standard for parks around the city. Our goal here was to really bring back the inner kid in the parents that bring their kids here, as well as something really new and exciting for kids to explore and learn about. There's think facts about animals that you might see at Lake Poway. Yeah, a portion of the construction costs were paid through a grant from the California State Department of Parks and Recreation. Wednesday, thousands of people lined up along Harbor Drive for the Holiday Bowl Parade. Balloons, bands, and floats filled the streets for the long-standing tradition. Yeah, and the fun continued then in the gas lamp quarter and during the game at Petco Park. USC ended the season with a win against 15th ranked Louisville. During the, uh, the parade, fans from both sides showed up in their gear ready to cheer on their team. Super excited. Yeah. yeah, super excited. We've we've never been here before, so we're super excited to be here. Yeah, if you missed the parade in person, you can still catch all the fun on CBS 8 Plus right here. Well, three longtime dive coaches in the South Bay are looking for the next generation of athletes to save their sport. So as we take you in the Zevely zone, Jeff visits Southwestern College where a new swim club is open for business. Even if you've never jumped into a pool in your life, legendary coaches are begging the next generation to jump on in. Diving into a pool is a graceful athletic act and a whole lot of fun that hooked a young Chula Vista boy named Dan Kovar. It was like love at first sight. First day, I'm going, oh, this is me, boom, I'm done, and I haven't turned back ever since. Dan got so good at diving, it became a joke. Clown diving? Yeah, clown diving, that was the fun part. Dan learned everything he knows about diving from the dive master champ, Tom Crosby. That's a fire dive. Tom was so good at diving, he performed in water shows as far off as Las Vegas. 33 years of diving shows consistent. He did 200 shows at SeaWorld, a comedy routine at SeaWorld. Tom's daughter, Carrie, also jumped in on the fun. When you get in that water and you do that dive the first time and you do it right, oh, there's nothing like that feeling. It's so exhilarating. Together, this crew says they invented synchronized diving. You're Here's taking credit for synchronized I'm not diving? I'm taking credit. <laughs> what? This man taking credit. That's a pretty big claim. It is a very big claim. But if you dive into diving history, Chula Vista played a big role. A new swim club called Soul Diving is open to all levels which is why we were invited to the pool. Let's work on getting your arms through, eyes up on the takeoff. To share this message. I hope that it would put out some awareness in the community that this program is here. Diving is a dying sport, no matter how you look at it. So if you want to see it in your Olympics any longer, we have to have grassroots programs. We have a beautiful facility down here. We just need to get the word out. One of the club's stars is 16-year-old Sol D'Angelo the defending CIF diving champion. What do you love about diving? It's fun and you know that you can't really get hurt. 
Soul wants to earn a college scholarship using Dan Kovar's coaching. Did you know that your coach was a clown diver? No, I didn't actually. <laughs> but just like decades ago, after the serious training, it was time for the athletes to blow off steam and clown around. Hey Scott, I've got a great idea. Yes. Why don't we get Jeff on the boards? Come here, I've got something for him. It's just his size too. <laughs> if you're looking for a clown, you've come to the right place. <laughs> I'll do whatever it takes to help this sport make a big splash. In the Zevely zone. That was a zero out of zero. Jeff Zevely, <laughs> CBS 8. He has such a good attitude. So Soul Diving has a GoFundMe page to help purchase equipment for their athletes. The club is also holding an open house at the Southwestern College Pool on January 20th. For more information, visit the Zevely Zone page on CBS8.com. Well, the city of San Diego has kicked off its 50th annual Christmas tree recycling program. If you are planning to take your tree down already, make sure to remove all decorations as well as the stand and only drop off real trees. You can also put your tree into your green organic recycling bin as long as it's cut into pieces. There are 16 drop off locations. We have put a link on um, our website, CBS8.com. Just click the help button. Know that the program runs through January 23rd. Cheers to those keeping it up that long. <laughs> hey, well, Santa, of course, made a return trip to San Diego this Christmas for some very special deliveries. Teaming up with the Rancho Coastal Humane Society, he surprised families just like he was surprised as a little boy. Photojournalist Scott Hall has the story. <laughs> this started when I was six years old. Merry Christmas! <laughs> I got a special gift. It was a puppy. Can't have a better Christmas than this. I didn't realize at the time that my parents went to an animal shelter and rescued that puppy. They did that and they, they saved the puppy and they changed me. <laughs> when we're kids, it's more about getting presents. <laughs> but I know in my own life, as I've gotten older, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! It's more about giving. What is that sound? Well, no. <laughs> Usually by the time we arrive, the gifts are all open, the kids are, you know, okay, that was that. And then we come along and hand them, you know, a furry ball of love. This is your new puppy, Sissy. And that's when the tears start. I think we have a match. <laughs> this is our 11th year. Our last delivery before the pandemic was Merry Christmas. a mom with three kids. The kids were totally surprised. Mom was grinning from ear to ear. The people that are watching the story right now that are going, hey, that's pretty cool. They see the value of it. They see how it changes the lives of the adopters. Look at you. This might be a very fond memory. It's going to be a great addition to the bags. family. <laughs> <laughs> they visit their shelter. It's nearest them, and they save a life. It's a feeling that's <gasps> deep inside. Really, really special. I uh, love sharing positive news with you. So yes, a family in South San Diego experienced the joy of Christmas. A family's loved one who suffered a blood clot to the brain six years ago was transported home from a nursing facility so she and her family could enjoy the holiday together. CBS 8's Brian White was there for her arrival. Any minute now, Julie McCarthy is going to come around the corner here in a Christmas themed ambulance. So I'm going to grab my camera and film the arrival. Look at that, We've got lights all over it. <laughs> this AMR ambulance has been transformed into Santa's sleigh. They have a special delivery for the McCarthy family. This is a special moment. Is he waving in there? Hi, Julie. 37 year old Julie McCarthy is home for Christmas. Here comes some helpers. Hey, Julie. Relax. 
relax a little, honey, relax. All's good. Oh. <laughs> All's good, sweetheart. A little more than six years ago, Julie suffered a blood clot in her brain. She's now paralyzed, but making progress every day. Here, we can recline that, if I can reach the button. There. She spent 40 days in the ICU in 2017, where it was a challenge just to breathe. Father Michael says she's come a long way. No, she's so precious. I'm, I'm so proud of her right now. This is, this is a bunch. For the past six years, she's been cared for at the Sharp Via Coronado Skilled Nursing Facility undergoing physical therapy. She hasn't been home in several years. It's a feeling that's deep inside. Really, really special. Julie got to spend Christmas with her father, mother, sisters, and her 14-year-old son. Yeah, I get a little emotional. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's been a long road, you know, we've got to where uh, we're able to uh, uh, give her the support that she needs to continue on and get some of that therapy help. She can't talk as of yet, but she's learned to communicate in other ways. This is a yes and her ear is a no and a thank you, Jen, and I love you. This knows. She was a little camera shy at first. H O L. But she did rally by writing a special message on her tablet. Happy holidays. <laughs> <laughs> she got there. In South San Diego, Brian White, CBSA. Good stuff, Brian. So sweet. Thank you. Wishing her whole family well. As always, thank you for your time. Thanks for staying informed for CBS 8. I'm Jenny Day. Take good care and Happy New Year.